My grandfather, Adolf, was an Austro-Hungarian musician. He came to Dublin in 1910 and married a girl from Glasnevin. Their first son, my father, was born on the 1st of January, 1914. Eight months later, the Great War started, and Adolf, now an enemy alien, was interned at Old Castle Camp, County Meath. Here, this was one of the few crumbs of family law my father threw me, he became a prolific butter black marketeer. Post armistice, the Gablers relocated to Berlin. Another crumb from my father. As a child of six or seven, he regularly stole tins of herring from a cannery and taking the boiling cans to his family, the fish was steamed before sealing. He burned his fingers. Back in Ireland in July 1921, the IRA and the British Army, who'd been at war with one another, agreed to a truce. Negotiations between the Irish and the British followed, which concluded with the Anglo-Irish Treaty, the 6th of December, 1921, and the establishment of the Free State in the southern part of Ireland. Northern Ireland had already been established in six of the nine counties comprising Ulster. At some point following these momentous political changes, the Gablers returned to Ireland, first to Waterford, where Adolf worked as an accompanist to silent films, later to Dublin, later still they went to Wolverhampton in the English Midlands, and finally they came back to Dublin again. Adolf was unhappy throughout. No one appreciated him. No one recognised his talent. He grew bitter. He drank. His tongue was sharp, his manners harsh, and his judgments fierce and inflexible. He taught his several daughters how to play the piano and other instruments, but my father, a dim Caliban in his opinion, Adolf spurned. He taught him nothing. During the 1940s, my father began to write and publish stories and articles in little Dublin magazines. Adolf believed the family could only have one artist, him. He tried to defenestrate my father's typewriter and they stopped speaking. They must have resumed relations later. I was born in 1954 and Adolf certainly visited my parents' house. As a man, he was forbidding. He was aloof. He made me slightly anxious, even fearful. I knew without having to be told that I must not annoy him with noisy, extravagant play or cheek or anything childish. He had a thick, German-sounding voice with a slight Dublin edge to it. His accent was heavy, syrupy and hypnotic.